Pirates fight for old Southwestern, so I'm a martyr, dear. Pirates fight for old Southwestern, so victory is near. So Southwestern will be loyal to the sun from from the sky. And remember to the end that a fight will never die. Pirates fight. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to, welcome to week number three of SU Football Weekly here with Coach Joe Austin. My name is Merle Bertrand, coming to you live tonight from Jack's Lounge at the Georgetown Sheraton. And uh, before we get into the show, we want to thank our first batch of uh, sponsors, including Antioch Georgetown, Baylor Scott & White Healthcare, Chappelle Realty Group, Chick-fil-A, Chisholm Trail Pediatrics, Hewlett Chevrolet Buick Volkswagen, Double A's Pizza, Eagles Wings, First Texas Bank, and Gary Brown, CPA. And Coach, a long night, both literally and figuratively, figuratively for the Pirates in Bellhaven uh, in Jackson, Mississippi. What are your overall thoughts after a tough 42-15 to 15 loss to the Blazers on the road? It was a long week. It was a hard week. Um, just to tell the story for, to catch up our parents and our fans of all the stuff that happened this week. Uh, on Wednesday, we had our whole practice canceled by lightning. Wow. And then that same lightning decided to follow us all the way to Jackson, Mississippi <laughs> and delay our game for two and a half hours. So on Friday, we're driving over to, to Jackson and we make our second pit stop at the Love's Truck Stop in Minden, Louisiana. Have you ever been there? No, I have not. No. Have you ever heard of I've it? I've been to Monroe, Louisiana. Have you ever heard of Minden, Louisiana? Yeah. yeah. Have you heard of it? Yeah, just by, by passing. Oh, okay, because yeah. I'd never heard of it. I've driven yeah. past it several times. So we stop at the Love's Truck Stop. Everything's going fine. Uh, we pull out. Let me back up even more. So the, the, the bus company that, that our logistics folks set us up with um, sent one fifty six passenger bus and one forty seven passenger bus with like this weird setup and some tables. So I'm a little skeptical to begin with. <laughs> um, this is a funky bus. It's a blue blue Volvo for what it's worth. And it's it's got like European stuff in it, like it says W C instead of restroom right. on it, and I'm like, what what is going on here? Uh, the guy said it was owned by Facebook before they bought it, and they use it for corporate training. I'm like, I don't know what that matters, but anyway. So <laughs> the blue bus makes it to Minden, Louisiana, and um, we pull out of Love's truck stop, and we're waiting at the stoplight. And there was a beeper going off for the last three hours about a luggage compartment being open. And the bus driver turns around to me and says, I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to turn the bus off. And I go, he turns the bus off in traffic with it in gear. <laughs> and it's not like it has a, a selector lever like in my pickup truck. If I turn it off and drive, I can put it back in park or neutral to restart it. Right. We now have a, a, a roadblock. The bus won't. He, he can't get it to start. He messes with it so long. He drains all of the power of the battery. Um, so we're stuck in Minden, Louisiana. About 90 minutes in, we fi I figure out this, this guy's not get, taking us anywhere. Mm hmm and he's got no remorse. He's blaming everybody but himself. I got to figure out how to get another bus. I got to figure out what we're going to do. Um, meanwhile, the police have shown up because it's quite an event in Minden, Louisiana, when you block all the traffic. And because the, the bus was still in gear, they couldn't move it. They had this giant wrecker, but it's the, the, the wheels are engaged by the drive shaft. So we, they, they couldn't even get it out of traffic. So the first thing I do is I figure out a place where we can go practice. I found us a field actually about five minutes away at the Minden Rec Center. It wasn't a great football field. I think it's a six or eight man football field. It wasn't 100 yards long and it wasn't the right <laughs> width, but it, it was kind of painted in some five yard increments. Um, there were a lot of mosquitoes. And the, the other crazy thing, uh, there's lots of crazy things about this whole story. They put the, 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 they lifted the wrecker without giving us any heads up. Mm -hmm. So all of our players stuff, my stuff's all on the bus. <sighs> And they're lifting up in the air. While they're lifting it up, I'm like, I have to be able to administer our practice. I run and jump onto the bus while they're lifting it up. Right, right. Because I got to get my backpack out. I got to at least yeah. be able to, to coordinate the practice. Well, of course, we can't let anybody else go on the bus when it's up on the wrecker and it's like four feet to get into there. So we find a place to practice and we take the one good bus and the defense drives over 
and they go to the mosquito field and they start doing their walkthrough. Uh, at least they have all their stuff and they have a bus that runs. So then the bus comes back to pick up the offensive group and the coaches, and I was riding on that first bus with the offense just based on the numbers. And we drive over. But they don't have anything to change into for practice. So most of them, they had their, their travel polo shirt on. So most of them had to practice in shorts and no shirt on. <laughs> so what needs to say, it wasn't a great practice. The focus wasn't necessarily perfect. So then it's, how do we get dinner? We found a place to, to, to deliver dinner to our hotel. Um, it actually ended up being a pretty good dinner. So we scrambled. We didn't get to eat till about 9 o'clock that night. So we went from noon to 9 without eating the night before a football game. That's not <laughs> ideal for That's a football not good. team. Um, and we found two hotels and the defense got done first and they took the first bus to the uh, Holiday Inn, which is pretty decent. Holiday, Exp Holiday Express, I think. Not bad. The second group that finished second and that group of coaches went to the best Western motel, which was OK. Not quite as good. Right. Most of the rooms had running water. Um, <laughs> I'm not kidding about that. We got it all worked I, I out. Everybody laughing, eventually, was going on everybody there, eventually yeah. had running water, and we got them fed, um, and we, we got them into bed. So we found another bus. The bus company sent us another bus. Um, so we go to bed, and they assured me that this next bus will be here at 2 a.m. It, it, it had left as we were finishing practice, and it would be good to go in the morning. So at 9 o'clock, we're going we're gonna to meet. We had breakfast at the hotel. We're going to head on to Bellhaven. Now, driving three and a half hours on game day is not a good game day thing right. either to do. It's not the recipe for fresh legs, but that's what we had to do. So we get up at 9 o'clock, no second bus. Second bus isn't there yet. So I'm on the phone calling the bus company. The dispatcher for the bus company can't tell me where the bus is. That also doesn't instill much confidence. So the bus, second bus finally gets there. Um, it's a 28 passenger bus. <laughs> it's a party bus. It's got a, it's got a bar in the back. It's got all these tables spread out. It's like what you would rent for your bachelorette party or your bachelor party, um, to cruise around and go bar hopping in. So we fit as many people as we can in there. We put the rest of the offense bus. And we had just enough seats for everybody. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of storage. Oh, by the way, let's talk about storage. There's no running water in Jackson, Mississippi, right? So we had to bring three gallons of water per person on the trip to begin with. So we've got a ton of extra cargo and stuff, and now we have one and a half buses worth of storage space. So we've got water bottles shoved into everything. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we had everything jam-packed. So the, the, the guy that drove this, we'll call it bus number three. Mm -hmm. There's more buses to come, by the way. If you're, if you're tracking at home, we're on bus number three. Um, that's like you should take a commercial break on the cliffhanger, right? But there'd be <laughs> too many cliffhangers. So we got bus number three shows up. We're about a half hour late to leave for Jackson, but we think we're going to get everybody in a seat. We think we're going to get going. The guy that drove the bus over pulls me aside. Says, Coach Austin, I've driven your team before and I worked for a different company. I'm not going to mention any company names. Um, I don't know if you remember me or not. I've been driving for 40, for 40 years. This bus is a piece of blank. <laughs> it took me from 9 a.m. last night till 9 a.m. this morning to from um, Texas. Wow. Because the bus kept breaking down on me. So this bus broke down on me 10 times. You need to call another bus company and get another bus and do not rely on this bus to get you, to the, to get you back home tomorrow. Right. Okay. I said, well, we're going to roll the dice. We're going to take this bus and hopefully we can get to Jackson. So we pile on the bus. Um, we left this, this nice driver with the, the, blue, the blue Volvo that was a paperweight at the Loves. Um, <laughs> We did eventually go back and get the player stuff off and the coach's stuff after practice, which, you know, so we got that worked out. So eventually about one third in the afternoon before, of the day of the game, we finally make it to Jackson, get checked into the hotel we were supposed to be in, you know, an hour or two just to relax, pregame meal, get ready to go to the stadium and, and play the game. Um, so again, it's been a really disjointed week. You know, things are all over the place. And you know, that stuff takes a toll. You know, the stress yeah. of that, it just, it, 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 it's hard. I'm not making an excuse. It's just, it's a hard situation. Not an, not, let's just say it's not an ideal situation to go play a football game in. So we get to the game. We get started in the second quarter. Um, we get a lightning delay. Right. The same lightning that chased us all the way <laughs> since Wednesday had caught up to us again. So we have a two-hour lightning delay. Um, we take a 10-minute halftime. Uh, and, of course, we'll talk about the game more, but we don't get off to a very good start. It was a really... It was such an up and down game. We had, we had guys that played great. We had guys that didn't play well at all. We had guys that had good plays and terrible plays. Um, so they got out to a 28 to nothing lead on us. Uh, we had a great third quarter. Yeah. We woke up. We, had, we won the third quarter 
15 to nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's a two score game in the fourth quarter, uh, but we ran out of gas and we couldn't complete the comeback. Uh, we lost a player to an ejection. Uh, Landry, went, our quarterback, went out with an injury. Damian Gomez came in and did a, did a really good job in his absence. Um, but so, the, yeah, the game got over at, at midnight. So we were planning to go to Bellhaven the next day, uh, watch the film, lift in, their, lift in their weight room. Their head coach is a good friend of mine. We had it all worked out. He was going to be a good host. I told him after the game that, you know, it's midnight. And I'm like, hey, we're not going to come by in the morning. We got to get a little bit of sleep. And he goes, right, right. thank you. Because <laughs> <laughs> we were going to be back there at 8, 8 a.m. the next morning. Yeah. So we, we slept in. Um, oh, let's just go back to the buses. So, of course. <laughs> You're never going to get on a bus again, are you? You're going to walk <laughs> next time. And you got a lot of travel coming All up right, next so, year. So we're, we, we, we're at the game. And, and I'm now in what was bus two. And bus three is the, bus, is, the, is the party bus with the bar in the back. So I tell Coach Creasel on the defensive bus, make sure everybody takes everything off this bus. We're not getting back on it. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't tell them that I'm firing that bus until they dropped us off because I didn't want them to not take us to the <laughs> right, game. Yeah. But we take everything off the bus and make sure we have everything off. And I tell, the, I tell the driver, who's the same guy that turned the bus off in the middle of the traffic the day before, um, we're good. We don't need you. We don't need your bus any longer. I've contracted another bus from the company. They're going to pick us up after the game. Mm -hmm. Went and told uh, his colleague that we're keeping her. That driver was great. She did a good job for us. So we at that point had original bus two, and new bus four from a second travel company. Uh, and actually, things went okay from there. We, we, had, we had dinner afterwards. We got back to the hotel. Uh, we slept in a little bit. We got up and left and went, um, went and ate breakfast, uh, got on the bus, and we got back home last night about 9.30 at night. Holy cow. So that, so should we talk about the game now? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know, and for folks who don't know, and we talked about it a little bit last week, those kind of trips are like military operations. You know, each, each, each offense on one bus, defense on one bus, you got a list of, of players so you can do roll call and make sure you don't leave anybody behind. I can't imagine what a scramble it had to be with everybody going everywhere. It's kind of like one of our broadcasts getting ready for the show, kind of scramble yeah, you know, and getting I, stuff you put know, together. I had, you know, I've been a head coach for 15 years, so I've, I've had a, some opportunities to work through some of these struggles before. I mean, we had – uh, we were in Italy a few years ago and our flight uh, got canceled in Italy. So right. we had to figure that out and we had to stay a night in New York city, um, and get hotels there and food there. So we've, we've scrambled and pulled it together before. Um, but yeah, I definitely, I definitely, I, you know, I don't know how much they pay me per hour, but I earned every nickel <laughs> of it on that trip. It was a lot of, a lot of work, but our coaches did great too. John Bishop, um, our operations guy did a ton of work with that. Other coaches were pitching in. So it's not that I, you know, did everything to make it work. Our coaches right. did a really good job, and Coach Bishop did a great job. And, um, you know, they all kept a pretty good attitude. Our guys kept a good attitude as well, uh, at least outwardly. It's just that. What are you going to do, right? What are you going to do? I mean, yeah. we lost two practices during the week. We lost all Wednesday. Friday was a blank show, right? I mean, practicing in the mosquito field with no shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, there, there were some breaks against us. So. To get back to the game, right. to spot a really good football team, 28 points. They won seven games last year. They're going to win eight to ten games this year. Good chance to win the USA South Conference. To battle back and make it a two-score game, we didn't finish it, but, you know, we hung in there. And, and we kept fighting and we kept battling, which is a credit to, to our football players. But that was how our week went. It was not the ideal week for a football team. Well, we'll look at some highlights here in just a second. If, uh, are they ready to go soon? I'll, we'll make sure they're ready to go. They literally hot off the presses. Uh, coach was kind enough to forward them to us. But, you may, I mean, that kind of puts that 21 to nothing start in a little bit more perspective. But even then, when you think about it, you had a nice drive, uh, kind of stalled out, led to a, a blocked field goal, and then a quick fumble gave them a short field. And then you got stalled down at the first and goal, I think, at the two-yard line or something like that. So if any one of those plays goes a little bit different, it might have been a different first half even. Well, that, that's, the, that's the inconsistent effort. So we, we, we started off on defense, gave up one first down, then stopped them. Mm -hmm. Forced a punt. Um, first play, we throw a 45-yard pass from uh, Landry Gilpin, Ethan Powell. Second play, Landry runs for 12 yards. We're first down at their 22-yard line. Right. Getting ready to go off to a good start. Two penalties push us back to a 54-yard field goal attempt. We know Charlie Fournier can make that. We allow tons of penetration up the middle, and, and they block it. The next play, uh, we, we lose coverage, and the running back leaks out for an un, untouched touchdown. Yeah. So in, in four plays, we went from going in to, to, to take the lead to being down seven. Uh, and as you said, we, we had another opportunity where we got to a first and goal situation, uh, had four plays from the two, 
couldn't get it in. Yeah. You, fig- you figure, you know, from head coach's perspective, if you give them 98 yards, statistically that's pretty hard to do. They scored in two plays. So that's another right. big swing of, of that we didn't score. We gave them a long field, so you feel okay about the decision to, to push it and go for it. Um, and then, you know, two plays later, they, go, they took them two, two plays to go 98 yards. So that's a, you know, a, t- a tough turn of events. But we played really well in the third quarter. We had four straight stops on defense. Um, they might not have been all three and outs, but maybe one first down. We really got rolling on defense, had some guys playing well. Then we got some things going on offense. Mm-hmm. Um, scored on a nice double pass, which I think will be in the highlight package. We threw a backwards pass to yeah, Jojo, Jojo Wilson. Yeah, quarterback yeah, through the charts right Yeah, now. we threw it to, to yeah. Colby Bartlett on a, on a pretty good trick play that, we, that uh, diehard fans maybe will recognize that we've, we've scored on it before every couple right. of years. When teams lose track of it in the film clips, you can, <laughs> you can dust it back off and recycle it. So we, we did some nice things, and I mentioned that Damian Gomez came in and, pl- and played quarterback for us, did a good job, and he continues to get more experience. And the more he plays, um, you know, the better he will be. Defensively, I thought Peyton Vaughn, um, who is currently watching film now because we had to move all, to move all of our meetings back. So uh, he's watching film right now. Ben, uh, ben Lancaster, our punter, will come on first. Uh, let's talk about Ben. Ben had an uh, average 45 yards per punt. Yep. Um, had, a, had a great game. Flip field position. Um, as we came in off the lightning delay, uh, we had to punt on our first drive and we were backed up. And it was a wet football, so the punt bounced. He picked it up off a of bounce and hit like a 60-yard punt. Just did a great, a great play there to, to, to flip the field. So really good job by Ben. Peyton Vaughn, who will be our guest tonight on defense, um, had you know at least 10 tackles. I'm not sure exactly what he was officially – credit for in stats, but at least 10 tackles, uh, had an interception, um, play, played awesome. Ethan Powell was our offensive player of the game. He's already been on the show, one of our captains, right. uh, had over 100 yards of, of, uh, of receiving yards. So there were some really good performances. Um, just an up and down game, a tough week, a, a weird trip. And I told the team at our, at our team meeting just a few minutes ago at, at 520, so like less than an hour ago, um, it's, an, it's been a memorable season so far. Yeah. You're not going to forget the Cal Lutheran win week one. And even though we didn't win, you're not going to forget the trip to, to Bellhaven and Jackson, Mississippi in week two. So it's, uh, they're, getting, they're getting their money's worth as far as an experience right. of, of, of playing college football. Well, the, the file's still downloading. You said about three or four minutes. So uh, I want to ask you about uh, some of it. Uh, you mentioned uh, Damian Gomez coming on, doing a nice job. I kind of got the impression that Landry Gilpin was a little bit hurt listening to their radio guys. He was kind of throwing it a little bit different than what we've seen. Uh, what's his status heading into week number three? I think we'll know that maybe a little bit later this week. Um, he wasn't 100% coming in, and, right. and of course he's a he's he's a, he's a great competitor. So he wanted to get out there and and play. So we'll know more about that. He's certainly not gone for the season or anything. It's nothing uh, n- nothing major. I think we'll know more of his status for this week later on. And I also thought number seven was a lucky number. You mentioned Peyton Vaughn uh, doing a great job at defense. I thought Sam will do a good job giving a, a spark on the offensive side running the football. It, he, he really did. He's had uh, two very good games. Um, his load has increased. He, he's played really well. So, Sam, yeah, Sam will blue, a f- freshman running back, had uh, three or four gains of between 10 and 20 yards right. in, in the running game. So I thought he, he also is a player that, that has done some really good things. Uh, so, do you want to throw the stats up real quick, the overall stats, and uh, should get that up here? I just want to get your thoughts. So, uh, there was the, the two things that struck out to me were that the offense couldn't run the ball very well and had a hard time, it seemed like, stopping them. Of course, 98 of those yards, I think, came on one long run or something like that. But uh, any concern on that? What are you going to learn from that? Uh, what are the guys going to learn from that heading into the, uh, into the future games here? Yeah, our, our rushing defense is a definition of what I mean by being an uneven effort. We had, I think, 12 or 13 plays for negative yards tackles for loss on, in their run game. Right. And then we just completely misfit uh, other plays and they would score un, untouched on long touchdown runs. So that certainly is problematic, right? When, when you're letting guys go through and, and you're not getting a hand on them. Uh, we lost our free safety, Pat Nicholas, in the second quarter. Uh, he was ejected from the game. And unfortunately, that, based on our conference rules, he'll miss this game also. And without him, we lost a lot in our run game. We, we yeah. play with a with a, with a free safety defense because he does a lot of cleaning up in the run game. He's really good coming downhill, tracking the football inside out, and cleaning it up. And you could definitely see that uh, you know, we, we lost some run defense when we lost him. And uh, some of the individual stats uh, to take a quick peek at. You mentioned uh, uh, the nice performance by Sam O'Blue and uh, – Anything else stand out there on the individual efforts that you were really pleased with? Well, I thought I thought Gianni Tysk, we did a good job. You know, 4.4 a carry, uh, Sam with with five yards per carry. I thought was was good. Um, you know, Ethan Powell with a 100-yard game was nice. 43 yards uh, on the first first play from scrimmage alone. 
Uh, Colby Bartlett scored in both games, which is nice. And Joey Robinson, our tight end, um, scored a really nice touchdown as well. We, we, we caught him on a wheel route. Um, so I think those are probably the, from a statistical standpoint, the, the highlights uh, offensively. And you know, def defensively, we mentioned that uh, you know Peyton Vaughn played pretty well. Right. Uh, Elijah Norris at corner played pretty well. Sometimes a sign of a good game at corner is when you don't really notice them, right? Yeah. Uh, they they kind of blend in. He, he he did his job, and I think our DBs overall did a pretty good job. We gave up less than three plays of 15 yards or more in the passing yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, so our issues were with how we fit the run, and by fit, for for maybe layman fans means how everyone attacks the the, the ball. You have to be in the right area, in the right gap. And so there are times that we didn't have the right structure of how we fit the run play, and that led to some, some long runs for their offense. Well, uh, bring, bring it back to us here soon. You mentioned uh, some of the ejections. It seemed like an unusually chippy game. I counted 22 penalties, a lot of personal foul calls, and you mentioned the ejections. Were they legitimate? Were the rest being a little bit ticky-tack, or was it somewhere in between? I didn't. For both teams, there's a lot of things that I wouldn't have called. I, di I didn't think there was – I thought there were a lot of flags that um, – for both teams that, yeah. that, that didn't need to be called. We got called for uh, a blindside block on a kickoff return for hitting a guy too hard. I mean, we hit him hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Matt Brulos hit him hard, but he was right in front of him and knocked him down. Um, so that was a tough one. We also had a play where um, uh, Josh Taylor, our, our offensive lineman, uh, got a hand to the face and knocked his helmet off. And the rule is you can finish the immediate block, you can't continue on. Right. Well, he never left that player. Yeah, yeah. Right. So even for your own safety, you're going to keep your hands on them. And they flagged him for a 15 yard personal foul for that. That was a tough one. You know, that's the thing that those are hard to officiate. Um, and then I think just as the game went on, they, they just really wanted to. I don't know if they sensed the need to try to keep control of the game. I never thought the game was out of control or close to like being out of control. But yeah, they were they were they were very uh, proactive in anything that they didn't like. Um, they, they were putting the yellow hanky down. Well, we have a great job by Suna getting uh, the file downloaded. Let's go ahead. We're just going to put the, the replay up. I haven't seen these. You have, obviously. And the uh, coach is just going to turn into a narrator here. If he narrates these highlights as well as he narrated the bus story, we're in great shape, okay. Coach. Yeah, so th this is Coach's film because we didn't do the Vibe broadcast. Uh, Donald Williams, our video coordinator, put together this package for us. So I've seen all these plays. I don't know the order that they're in, uh, but I should be able to, to, to tell us what we're looking at. Um, yeah, I'm just going to talk about this as we go through. So uh, this is our first play from scrimmage. We've got Ethan Powell down the sideline in a one-yard situation. He does a great job of using his body to shield the corner. Uh, I don't know if we'll see one view or both views, but if it, if it goes to the end zone view, you'll see Ethan. No, you don't see it, but he did a great job show, uh, shielding the defender from This is the second player of the game, play of the game. Um, a running back uh, misses the block, but, of course, it's tough to sack Landry, so he escapes back to his left. And here's what I talked about where – we're two plays offensively in the game worth their 22-yard line, um, and then it, we, we went backwards from there, unfortunately. Later on in the first quarter, good escape, good throw down the sideline uh, to, to Mitchell Garrett, and hopefully we'll see Mitchell's fourth quarter catch. Mitchell didn't get to play in the first game. He was sick. Uh, he made some really nice plays for us. So we're going to bring some defensive pressure here. Uh, we're bringing four to the, to the right side. And it's Jason Lund that had that hit. And it, was, it made the quarterback get rid of it. And that's Micah Justice making the nice play, tipping it up in the air to himself for the interception. That gave us a short field. Here's Gianni Tysigui on an outside zone run, making the first guy miss. And, and, and Gio had several good eight, nine yard runs just like that. A pretty reliable night for him. And we mentioned Sam also. I'm sure we'll see some, some plays from Sam as we go through. Pretty simple scramble for Landry. And what Colby Bartlett does there is does a great job of coming back to the football. When Landry breaks the pocket, all of our players are trained on what to do. Because, you, you know, Landry's really good at, at creating. Uh, and here's another isolation down the, down the sideline. Um, this is the last play of the first quarter. That gets us to first and goal at the two. Uh, we talked about how we didn't cash in there. We, we had four plays and didn't score. Uh, and that was, a, that was a turning point for that. And here we're going to see, uh, you know, a, a punt from Ben Lancaster. Ben had a great night. Good coverage here. Our, our punt team is doing a good job. Our punt team did a really good job last year as well. And so that was really, you saw we were backed up that flip field position from about our own five to their own 45. This is the punt right after um, the, the lightning delay. And the ball was wet, so snap wasn't great. Ben does a great job picking it up. And then there's a 60-yard there's punt to really get us out of 
as they say, the shadow of your own goalpost and give our, give our defense some, some room to work with. So another nice play uh, by Ben Lancaster. 97 had a really good game. I forget his name, but he set their, their school record for tackles for loss. Um, he, he, we, we struggled inside with, with him. And there's Pat, uh, uh, PV, we call him Peyton Vaughn. Again, he was our defensive MVP, a really nice interception in zone coverage there, had 10 or 11 tackles or more. Uh, this is Sam LeBlue on the outside zone run, and he cuts that up fast, doesn't he? That was a good 14, 15 yard run. Um, just stretched the defense. He saw that opening and, and hit it in there. To end this drive, uh, here's Charlie Fournier to put the first points on the board for us. Of course, you know, you want touchdowns, but we're in a mentality now we just need to chip away. So we're down by 28. Let's just get going. Let's get some points on the board. Charlie's so reliable, so when we have good protection, um, he, he's going to put it through. Oh, look, I got a spot shadow. Oh, no, I'm gone. <laughs> I like it. So this is a, a misdirection kick for us. We usually kick it left. We kicked it to the right, and that messed up their return scheme. You can see our, our, our kick coverage team really got down there, made them run laterally, and they started within the 14. So that's a, a wrong way kick for us, uh, and, and it worked out nice. Good, good. Uh, execution by Charlie. This is one of our 10, 11, 12, might have been as many as 13 negative plays, and um, I don't remember who got in and got that one in particular, but we did have some really nice uh, defensive plays, uh, especially in their run game. Here's Sam LeBlue again, uh, ripping off a good chunk. So we did have some nice run plays. The overall stats didn't look great because they did stop us a few times, but we're seeing some runs uh, by Gianni Tysigui, uh and the freshman here, Sam LeBlue, another 12, 13 yard run. Uh, a, a good overall night for Sam. This is third quarter action. Um, scramble by Damien. We had actually called our trick play, and Damien didn't get to practice that play during the week. So I hate to say he didn't know what our trick play was. <laughs> but luckily, we, we, we saved it. We, we got to come back and run it again later, so we'll see it. But that's the story of that scramble is uh, there was a little bit of confusion. Here they, they lost our tight end. Our tight end ran, to, ran a wheel route. Our outside receiver ran to the post. We leaked our tight end out to the left side. Uh, nobody covered Joey Robinson for our, our first touchdown. So we, we've cut it to, to 28 to 10. Another stop by our defense, Alec Gomez coming in there, um, getting the tackle for a loss. He probably should got credited for a sack. It doesn't matter, still a, still a really good play. Uh, we played much better third down defense. So here's a chance on third down defense. Um, really good, about 25, 30% completion or conversion percentage for Bellhaven on defense. Uh, we're into the fourth quarter. Of course, Damien's been in the game now for quite a while. He's got us into the end zone already with the touchdown pass to, to Joey Robinson. Good pocket movement, steps up in, in the pocket there, finds JoJo Wilson across the middle. That was a, a really nice 18-yard gain. Uh, and, and JoJo had a, a good game last week, another solid game. He's played well for us in both of the times he's uh, seen action with us this year. Damien stands in there, hits, hits another good play to, to, to Ethan Powell. That's a flood route. We sent three receivers to the right side of the field. Then here's the trick play, um, the, the gadget play. We've run it probably, it's probably our fifth time in 10 years we score on it. Like I said, you can bring it out every couple years. We throw it backwards on the screen pass. Everybody runs up to JoJo, and that's Colby Bartlett who sold the run block. And when his man filled, he ran to the corner of the end zone. Uh, great throw. We're getting late in the fourth quarter now. Um, this was after we cut, we cut it to 28-13. And there's the catch by Mitchell Garrett, um, taking it away from their free safety. We probably threw it a little bit late. Mitchell was open a little faster, a little bit sooner than that. But Mitchell Garrett is a sophomore, is, is a guy to keep his eyes on. Really tall, um, really good potential to continue to, to develop. Good job being elusive there by Damian. And he finds JoJo on that same flood route again. We hit that flood route uh, for a couple first downs in the fourth quarter. And then here we are late in the game. Um, they put the ball on the ground, and it helps us get another tackle for loss, force them into third and long. We really had a lot of good plays in, in, in the run game. And this is the third down uh, to get us off the field here at the end. Good pressure, and then a nice hit um, coming up by, by Peyton Vaughn. He, he was all over during that game in pass defense and run defense. Another stop here for uh, our punt return team. Who else but... Uh, Peyton Vaughn there to get a hand on him, and then Sam Le LeBlue uh, tackles him as well. So actually, we committed a penalty there. We had two number sevens on the field, but I guess if you don't get caught, it's not a penalty, right? <laughs> but, uh, exactly right. We had two number sevens. So that's the type of insight you don't get from everyone, telling everybody that you had two number sevens on the field. All right, hope you did okay. That's the narration of our highlights from the Bellhaven game. Yeah, that was very nice. And uh, final thoughts here before uh, we let you go. Talk, I mean, 
bad start, 28 nothing, but you won the second half, 15 to 14. Is that momentum to build on heading into Mary Hardin Baylor this weekend? Well, I hope so. We just have to, you know, dust that off. Nothing went right that week, and so you've got to overcome um, the fact you had some adversity, and, and I, th I think we'll move forward just fine. Well, Coach, uh, I'm glad you made it back safe and sound if a little bit later than, than you thought you were going to. Uh, we'll give you a chance to catch your breath, and when we come back, we're going to hear from uh, sophomore punter Ben Lancaster. He'll be our next guest here on the Southwestern Football Show, South SU Football Weekly. You're watching SU Football Weekly on the Vibe Live Network. of SU Football Weekly. Merle Bertrand here, soon of Incott, Shane Carter on hand, Christina Weber, my better half, keeping an eye and an ear on the broadcast, making sure that we're looking and sounding good. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. And I uh, want to thank another batch of sponsors here. Ja uh, of course, the Jack's Lounge here to Georgetown Sheridan, John F. Lewis CPA, Mighty Fine Burgers, Fries, and Shakes, Minuteman Press and Waterboy Graphics, Primerica Financial Solutions, Ross and Champion, Rudy's, and Schlotsky's Georgetown. So join now that uh, we saw him uh, feature pretty prominently in the highlight packages a few moments ago, sophomore punter Ben Lancaster. And uh, Ben, on our Cal Lutheran broadcast, TJ Baylor was busy busting the people's chops who came in from California. I yep. think he would probably make an exception for you. So what brought you here to Georgetown University, or Southwestern University um, here in Georgetown? Yeah, so uh, mainly um, what brought me to Southwestern, uh, I'd say would, would be just be Texas. Uh, I love Texas. Um, I would visit, uh, you know, during high school, and I just love the area. It's a little bit different from California, um, from like the city to the country, but mainly just being in Texas is what it's about for me. Well, your second year here now, and what, what's the experience been like so far? Oh man, it's a it's a blast. Like um, playing playing for uh, playing for Southwestern, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's a little different from high school, but uh, it's it's a blast with with a good group of guys that we got right now. Now, TJ is going to say, don't say that. Say it's terrible. So no, those California, no, no more of those Californians come. But uh, no, no. Don't, don't, don't listen to him. Uh -uh. Um, what's the biggest difference between California and Texas? What have you found the big diff biggest difference to be? Um, I'd have to say the people. Um, everyone here is super nice and uh, very loving. Um, you know, California, it's a little bit different, um, which is understandable. But uh, Texas over here is just very, like, heartwarming and very accepting. Well, I noticed that you're a business major with a minor in history. Any particular area of history that, you know, you're really kind of fascinated by, or is it just kind of the whole thing in general? Mainly all of it. I just love history. It's very fascinating to me. Just, uh, you know, being able to look in the past and just see where we come from. It's just one of my interests, yeah. Uh, what, what are your plans for the future? Is that going to feature more into your plans or more of the business, or are you trying to, trying to marry the two things together a little bit? Um, right now, I'm more focused on the business uh, aspect. Um, I'm really interested in real estate and commercial real estate. So after college, I would like to uh, get my real estate license and pursue that. 
Well, here are some numbers for you folks. Been averaging 38.8 yards per pump with the longest 70 with uh, two out of 23 inside the 20. Oh, that, I think it was two of 13. Uh, what's it feel like to launch one like that, one of those big boomers that flips the field and pins down the other team inside the five-yard line or something? Yeah, those, man, it's, it's an interesting feeling. It's like hitting a home run. It's super smooth. Um, just, you know, after hitting that ball, looking up, and it's a tight spiral. It's just, you know, it's just a rust of adrenaline, but it's amazing. It's like the best feeling ever. And people, you know, a lot of people think that punting is just punting. You just go out there and, and, and kick the crap out of the football. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit because there are specialty situations. If you're punting from the 40-yard mm -hmm. line and you kick it 10 yards out of the end zone, you don't gain that much. Yep. So talk about those kind of specialty situations, how you work on that kind of stuff and practice a little bit. Yeah, so punting is very, uh, very technical. It's like you said, it's not just punting the ball. It's very, um, like, there's very, like, there's a lot of stuff you can mess up on. You know, you're holding the ball. You could, you know, mess up on that. You got your steps. Um, also with the long snapper, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, with Alec, he's doing a great job. So um, with him doing his job, being able to just place those punts is, you know, ideal for us. And uh, do, you, do you practice that kind of thing? We're angling the punt to the sideline. Do you do it from different parts of the field? Uh, talk about that some. Yeah, we'll go from uh, left hash, left middle, middle, uh, right middle, and then right hash. Um, we're a punt right team, so we'll mainly go to the right, but uh, in the next probably a couple couple days we're going to start going to the left a little bit well I, I didn't experience this firsthand but this is a story that was related to me and it was one of my my favorite stories and I always think about it when talking to a special teams guy or a punter there was a long time legendary high school coach here in Texas doing an interview and they have been known for scoring a lot of points year after year but they're having a bad year of one year and their punter was named all district and the interviewer congratulated him and said, if I ever have another punter, if I said, if I ever have another blankety blank punter named all district, I'm retiring. Yeah. I think punters are underappreciated. Would you agree yeah. with that? Yeah. You know, like our saying is uh, kickers are people too. So that's, that's <laughs> what we say. Yeah. Well, you'd rather not see your punters and kickers making tackles, but I mean, you're, 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 you're a pretty big guy. Oh, I'm Deep all down, do you enjoy getting down the field and making a big hit like that? Oh yeah. I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to. Did you get in the way when you're not supposed to to try to? Yeah, in high school a couple of times. Every now and then. Ran down a little bit too far, but yeah. So what do the coaches say when that happens? Good job or get the heck out of the way? It, just make a tackle, you know. Yeah, you're going to go yeah. down there and do something. Just might as well right. just do it. Yeah, fine. punters are football players too, right, at the end exactly. of the day. Yep. Um, how much different the second year now? I don't think you played all that much last season. Mm -hmm. how, now that you've had a couple of games and, and a second season underway, how much different is college football from high school football for you? Um, there's not much a difference um, for college and football. I mean, from high school to, to college football, um, except that it's more like you're on your own. You know, you're in college. Right. You're, you're not with your family. They're not waking you up to go lift in the morning or eat this certain type of meal. Like you're on your own. You have to wake up in the morning. You got to do, do your own thing. It's all on you. It's, it's you got to be disciplined. It, does it get easier with time? Do you kind of find your rhythm a little bit, or is yeah. it still a little bit tough to? You know, to, to turn off the TV or turn off the tablet or whatever. You know, there's, there's some, some of those times you kind of procrastinate a little bit, but, you know, you're on the team and you, you know it's your job. you got to take accountability and, like, have that discipline. And well, what's your favorite memory so far? And, again, it could be football-related. Uh, it could be non-football-related. It could be one of each, whichever whichever you prefer. Uh, my favorite memory is probably um, that 70-yarder in the first game. Yeah. Yeah, just completely flipped the field. That was, that was a rush. I mean, that, that's the kind of thing, again, go, goes back to kind of being underappreciated. That's the kind of thing that can really flip the mood of an entire team. Nobody wants to see the punter come out on the field, but when that happens, you, we've all seen it, a big play like that. The next thing you know, you either get a three and out or an immediate turnover and it's a short field. What, what are the guys, what, you know, what's the mood like when you come off the field on a play like that? Coming off the field, it's just, it's crazy. Like everyone's hit, coming up, hitting you in the helmet, just like right. shaking you. It's just, it's, it's crazy, but you know. When, when you're able to succeed and, and show up for the team and help them out, it's just a blast. Well, uh, before we let you go here, any uh, final thoughts, any shout-outs that you want to give to anybody that's tuned in out there? Yeah, uh, shout-out to uh, Mom, Dad, uh, Coach Tyler. He's a great mentor, and uh, all the staff at SU. Appreciate you guys. Well, of course, we want to see the offense on the field as much as possible, but oh, I think course. the Pirates are in good hands when you, when you take the field. Oh, yeah. Uh, congratulations on the good start so far, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. All right. Ben Lancaster, sophomore punter for the Southwest Empire's guest number two. We'll take a break. Be back for the third quarter. Chuck Crazy will be in for Crazy's quarter, and he's going to talk to Peyton Vaughn. I think Peyton's here. If not, uh, we'll figure it out, and we'll be back with the third quarter. So you're watching SU Football Weekly here on the Vibe Live Network.
Welcome back to SU Football Weekly for segment number three of tonight's show. Joining me is Peyton Vaughn. Peyton, you, you came out of uh, Azle, Texas, right? Sure. Well, before we get started, let me congratulate you on uh, defensive player of the game. Appreciate that, you. That is, Appreciate a, uh, you is a big thing to, uh, to, to pull that out. And, and on top of that, you're leading the team in tackles so far uh, after two games. You've got 15 solo tackles, uh, five assists. You've got four of those tackles for loss and an interception. Uh, now, back to your hometown. Right. Compare Azle, Texas to Georgetown, Texas, now that you've been in, in Georgetown for a few years. Um, honestly, I see a lot, of, a lot more similarities than I expected because, you know, I'm coming from Azle, Texas, kind of like a small town vibe, you know, everybody. Like, Everybody doesn't know each other, but it gives you off that vibe. You kind of get that same tight-knit type community here in Georgetown, too, you know, and then you got the bigger city in Austin. I had a bigger city in Fort Worth right next to me, so it was kind of an easier transition for me, I'd say. So what would you tell potential recruits from the Fort Worth area that, that you may come across about Southwestern that is special that would, would make them want to come play here? I told them that it's just this whole community and the touching cities around it, just this part of Texas is growing. Plenty of opportunity, plenty of chances to make memories with a lot of good people. And just uh, this area of Texas especially is just really far ahead and just really coming populated and it's just a place to be coming yeah, here. And, and really in the financial and in the, the tech sectors, there's really a lot of growth in this right. area and right. there's a lot of job opportunities for graduates, especially from an institution like Southwestern. Exactly. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, playing defensive back. Okay. Uh, in this conference, there's a lot of teams that run a spread, uh, so they'll spread the defense out a little bit. Right. Talk about what that's like to be one-on-one -on -one with some of the receivers in this conference. There's some really talented guys right. on the offensive side of the ball, even on your own team. Right. But uh, so you get to practice against those guys. But talk about that a little bit with the practice, and then in the guys you face. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, just like being in open space as a DB on these receivers, like on our team, we got guys like AJ Garcia or JoJo Wilson or Ethan Powell. Like, you just got to really rely on your positioning on the field. It comes down to because you're always, you're never going to be faster than the guy, and it's always not going to be case. You're always going to be bigger than the guy. So for me, especially, I'm covering inside receivers. I got to play with my alignment a lot and rely on other guys, such as Patrick Nicholas, my free safety, who plays in the middle. Rely on him being able to help me. So I'll line up outside of my receivers, and you just got to play with your alignment and stuff like that. Know where your help's going to be. That's the biggest thing whenever you're covering fast guys. You got to know where your help's going to be. That way you can leverage it that way. Well, you just answered my next question, which was talk about the relationship of the different positions in the secondary. Uh, of the defensive positions is probably the least I know about is mm -hmm. the secondary. So talk about the importance of that, uh, the relationship, and to, like you just said, you have to know where the other guys are. Right. Um, like as you mentioned earlier, I mean, it's easy to look at my individual stats and say that he's heck having a heck of a season, but I've been entrusted by my coaches, especially Coach Creasel, Coach Kelly, Coach Carr, all these deep guys, Coach Killian. They've entrusted me with the position to where Linebackers take blocks for me. The D line are positioning in the gaps a certain way. Also, I can make the tackle on the play. We talk about doing your 111th a lot. There's 11 guys out there, and if one guy does not do his 111th, then you're going to see a play go off for 80 yards for a touchdown. You know what I mean? So you got to really do your 111th, lock in on that 111th. And I'm fortunate enough to be the 111th where I get one on one situations with the ball carrier most of the time. Yeah, and that's a little scary, though, when you're that last line of defense right. sometimes. So uh, talk about. Uh, your, your role in run support. You kind of just touched on it a little bit. Um, but, you know, you do make a lot of tackles. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these offenses run a, a little uh, run pass option. Right. So, you know, sometimes the play may appear like a, a pass play and end up being a run play. How do you make those reads and, and, and how are you so, so successful? Well, it comes down to you, you have a certain key. Like for me, I, I most of the time my eyes are on like an H back or um, a running back or a tight end. And you can't let your eyes get off that because it's whenever you get your eyes off that, you're trying to pay attention to where the ball's going. The offense is doing all this misdirection type stuff. That's whenever plays happen is you lose your guys. So staying on your keys, like for me, staying on my H-back, it will take me right to the ball every play. So that's really the key to defense is having a key before the play, knowing it, staying with that key, and then the play will come to you. So, and that's information that, that is taught to you by your coaching staff, right? right? Throughout yeah. the, the year and as you study film. Um, Talk about how important it is for you to be able to pick up on that 
and, and execute. What happens if you don't? Well, I mean, I'm already on defense, so you got to think we're already reacting to everything the offense does. So being prepared and watching film and being able to know what offenses are going to do in these certain formations, it just gives you that edge. It just lessens the gap that's already there because, you know, the offense knows the play. They know where they're running. They know where they're going to pass the ball. Defense, we're all reacting to everything they're doing. So being able to have that slight little hint that they might run this way just because how this guy's aligned, that goes very far when it comes to playing defense. And you just mentioned film. Right. study. Um, talk about that a little bit and how important it is to pick up little tells from the teams you're going to be playing, you know, based either uh, on the formation the offense is running or like you mentioned, maybe uh, the way that a guy's leaning. Right. In that uh, film session, like uh, me and my guys, are weak safeties and strong safeties monsters, we all even have an extra film session with the coach and just being able to uh, see maybe the H-back, he's lined up outside the uh, lineman. That means that they might go out this way, or if he's lined up inside him, he might go across the other way. So it's just, uh, like I was saying, just being able to have that extra edge of knowing where the team's going to go, it allows you to play more aggressive and more on your feet rather than just sitting back and reacting to everything. So, you know, it's all about being aggressive, playing defense. So you got to be able to know what you're doing and be confident in what you're doing. So what other things do you do to prepare for a game? You know, for example, Mary Harden Baylor. You watched film today. Coach right. mentioned that earlier. Uh, what other things do you do in your week of preparation? Um, uh, during the week, uh, like we have the weight sessions, and all that. We have all our practicing. But a big part of like what can make us successful is Coach Austin's implemented this mental training. Mm -hmm. and you gotta you gotta think stuff before you do it. So it's all about. It's easy to go against a team like UMHB and be like oh, uh, we might have a lot of, like, not, not a lot of success and everything like that. It's easy to tell yourself that. But if you're telling yourself you're rehearsing these plays or you're making plays, you're doing your assignment, that goes a far away because if you're seeing yourself doing it in your mind, then you're going to do it on the field too. And so it kind of becomes like, second nature, right. a little bit ingrained. Right. Uh, okay, so um, you're a senior, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how would you describe your overall experience at Southwestern as a student? Yeah, an experience, that's for sure. I mean, going through COVID, I mean, I had that one normal semester as a freshman, and then that spring semester, that's when the COVID-19 hit, having to do classes online, like that's a struggle in itself, just trying to stay it's locked different. in. It's, it's a lot so different. It's so different, so different. It's a different way of learning and everything. And just, you know, it's just been a, it's been a roller coaster just going through these online classes and then finally getting back to this normalcy where all my classes are in person. It really affects the social dynamics on campus. Like, I mean, a lot more people were talkative and social going into like going into my freshman year. But as you see after COVID, like people are used to staying in stores and just staying to these small groups. There's not as much people being as outgoing and stuff like that. So you definitely notice a different social dynamics, but it's definitely coming full circle. Yeah, I think people are starting to get right. back to a little bit normal. So what would you consider your favorite memory of your time at Southwestern? My favorite memory. I'll say as far as football goes, it was definitely that last Cal Lutheran game. That was That's that pretty was exciting. something, man. So many emotions going through my head. And then school eyes, like, I, out of sight of that. Um, honestly, I'd just say the days that I get to meet with the guys and we just sit around and watch football or just sit movies and just sit around all day and just hang out with each other. Like, I cherish those days because they don't last forever. So, you know, I Well, and that's count. exactly right. And, and they're really important for uh, team chemistry right. as well. Right. So, uh, and there's a lot of football to watch yep. here uh, <laughs> yep. recently. And uh, some of it not quite so exciting if you're a Cowboys fan <laughs> like me. But um, OK, now let's talk about uh, your major. You're, you, you mentioned you're a psychology major. What are your plans uh, after graduation? Do you plan on uh, entering into a, a postgraduate program or are you, you looking to go right into the workforce or coaching or, or what, what are you looking at? I'll definitely see you when it comes to this next semester, like I'm graduating in December. So I'm gonna really take this next, that next spring semester to focus in on taking my grad exam because I do want it to go to graduate school and eventually get my doctorate for psychology, sports psychology for more specific. But even then, if I come out of graduation and I have a job connection that is really like my dream job, then I'll go with that, you know. So, um, what, what, what is, uh, or, or do you have anyone that you want to thank for your time here at Southwest and somebody who really supported you? Maybe it was a, a player uh, from pre previous years that kind of showed you the ropes, or maybe it's a coach, or maybe it's a teacher. Uh, I'd say there's multiple different people, so I'll just go through it. When it comes to an older player, I'd say Ben Brockman played a lot of key yes. role in my 
just teaching me how to be a leader of the team. He made a lot of tackles when he was here. A lot of tackles. He was big on mental preparation, so he's taught me a lot when it comes to that. Professors, I have a few professors, Dr. Crockett, Dr. Giuliano, that have done wonders for me, gone beyond. That's another big thing that I tell people coming to Southwest is that the professors there really do care about you and really do care about your future and will do a lot to help you. And then as far as my like biggest supporter, it's got to be my mom. She's over there already supporting me. You know, <laughs> she, she'll go. Hi, Mom. <laughs> she'll do anything it takes to make me happy, put a smile on my face, make sure I get things I want. So, you know, I can be more thankful for that. You know? Well, it's pretty rare to find somebody that's a bigger supporter than, than your mom, right? right? <laughs> Uh, and uh, if they take that extra step beyond what other kids' moms are doing, then, then they're special. So uh, you should be pleased with that. Um, so one last question related to football, and then I'll let you shout some people out, and we'll go back and talk about Mary Harden Baylor, or Merle and, and Coach Austin, Will. Um, when you're preparing all week long and you're getting ready game day that morning, is there, can you get a feeling to know that you're going to have a big game like you did against Bellhaven? Um, do you, you just kind of sense it or uh, you just don't know and you, until you get out there? Um, I'll be honest. I, when I'm the most calm, I'd say, is whenever I go out there and probably have my best games. It's because you're the most comfortable. And stuff and like that. I go out there and maybe messing stuff up or missing tackles. But if I'm just calm and I keep my energy level calm throughout the day, that's when I feel like I come out there and be the most comfortable on the field. Can you, can you help others in that situation? Oh, for sure. Just telling guys um, to stay locked in, just focus on one thing at a time. I feel like it's easy to s think about so many different things, but if you just think on the one thing at the time, then that helps you slow down and collect yourself. Well, you've played very well this season. I want to congratulate you on that so far and, and you know encourage you to continue that performance and preparation as you finish out your college career. Uh, do you have anyone you want to shout out, uh, girlfriend, uh, anybody you want to just say hi to? Uh, say hi to my dad. What's up, dad? <laughs> uh, and then I want to shout out the whole team. I know we took on a loss this last week, but we're going to reload. We're going to get back right. We're going to focus on the things that make us the team that we are. And we're going to go out there and shock this conference this year. Well, and, and that is the kind of leadership that a defense needs. Good job, uh, sure. Peyton. We'll be right back for segment four where Merle and Coach Austin will discuss the upcoming Mary Harden Baylor game on Saturday. Stay with us here on SU Football Weekly. <laughs> I want to thank the rest of our sponsors uh, of Southwestern football this year, including Brooks and Ale at the Sheraton, Stephanie Featherstone with State Farm, Upstream Investment Partners, Zane's Hands, Short Child Shirt Company, First American Title, The Golden Rule, Mesquite Creek Outfitters, Groove Lion Productions, HEB, 
and house of games with all those takes a lot of money to run any sort of a college level program especially football so be sure to patronize those folks and thank them for all their help thanks to bessie here at the georgetown sheraton and uh, coach before we talk about mary harden bale i want to give you a chance to talk about ben and peyton just a little bit well you can you can definitely tell they're 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 good guys right i mean yeah. they're, they're fun to be around every day um, ben has made such an improvement from year one to year two in our program i think he really went to school watching how will herbs did it last year learned a lot from him um, and our new kicking punting coach logan tyler is doing a great job also um, coach tyler uh, kicked at florida state and arizona state was the number one high school kicker in his recruiting class really has a ton of knowledge and he's close in age to him he just finished up playing right um, so he can relate with him really well so i think he he's putting the work in he's getting some good coaching uh, and and the results are there so it's good to see you see him get going with with uh with peyton he, he's smiling all the time. I mean, you can tell that he's <laughs> going to be um, you know, a psychology professional because he just knows how to have a growth mindset and he knows how to um, just manage things, manage himself and manage situations. And so um, when I talked about the adversity of the trip and how it affected players differently, it didn't affect him at all. Right. <laughs> I mean, he, he played awesome. And he was able to compartmentalize it all. And as he said, you deal with one thing at a time. And you deal with the things you can control, and you, and, you, and you figure out how to get rid of the things that you can't. And so um, he, did, he just did a, a great job of, of managing that situation and managing himself. Well, the Pirates open conference play on Saturday night in Belton against defending national champion Mary harden Bale. And I got good news for you, Coach. The bus ride is a lot shorter Saturday night. So, you know, if you, have to, if you actually have to get out and have to push the bus, I think you'll still if make it If it takes us four buses to get to Belton, that's uh, <laughs> Uh, the crew wiped out number 11, Muhlenberg College, 62-13 to to open the season. Fell 28-24 to last Saturday to number 6, University of Wisconsin-Whitewater. They don't this very often. It's going to be a matchup of a couple of one-on-one -on -one teams. Both of them going to be coming in with a bit of a chip on their shoulder. Talk about the Crusaders a little bit, this year's version. Well, they're, they're really, really good again. I mean, they, they came in number one, um, and they, they really smashed the number 11 team. Uh, and last week, Wisconsin-Whitewater, who's won six national championships themselves. Right. Uh, played, I would say, the perfect game on a blueprint to, to beat Mary Harden Baylor. They kept the game really short. Uh, Mary Harden Baylor had three drives in the first half. Wow. And so they, they kept the game short. They scored points themselves. They didn't turn the football over. And um, <coughs> the, the game went right down to the wire. Uh, Mary Harden Baylor had a, the ball first and goal to two or three, and they got stopped on four plays by uh, Whitewater. And with about a minute left, Whitewater got the ball, I think maybe about two minutes. And they went, the, they went 98 yards and scored a touchdown with just a wow. few seconds left to beat them. So they, they gave themselves a chance. They had that great goal line stand, um, to, even though they were at home, to, to pull the upset on them. So they, they really outlined, I'd say, what a really good blueprint is. Um, Mary Harden Baylor's offense is really, really good. They've had 17 possessions. They've scored 12 touchdowns, kicked a field goal, missed a field goal, and punted twice. So they've got... 12 touchdowns on 17 possessions playing the number 11 team right and a team that was underrated at number six um so they're really good on they're really really good on offense they've got uh the returning first team all-american quarterback uh returning all-american uh slot receiver a lot of really good linemen it's, so they're they're very very good on offense well with all that said uh you know, a very difficult way to start conference play. The Pirates all-time 0-5 against Mary Harden Baylor uh, since football began here. The average score in those contests, 52-6. to With all of that kind of stuff said, and you talked about what a great job uh, uh, University of Wisconsin-Whitewater did, do you almost feel like you got to play the perfect game to hang with those guys? You do have to play the perfect game. And we, in our team meeting, we went over our blueprint. I told them, we're gonna, you know, as coaches, we're going to give you the best blueprint we can for us to go, to go pull an upset. We went through all the all the elements of what we need to do on offense and defense and special teams and, and game management to give you to give ourselves a chance to do it and so um you know, we're going to go give, give them our, our best effort uh and we're going to score some points i mean they're going to have some they're going to have some success offensively to score 12 out of 17 against against top 10 teams is, is pretty impressive so we'll have to do some things on offense to try to to to, to score a little bit ourselves but we want to minimize the number of possessions that they have so um, when our defense is on the field, we need to make sure we're not giving up any, any long plays to the, to the best of our ability. Make them have to string, string together first downs. It would be incumbent on, on our, our kickers and punters, Charlie and Ben, to help us with field position and our coverage team. And then the more, the more first downs our offense can get, the more chances to score points. Uh, obviously, that will help a lot as well. 
And you mentioned, I think, uh, with uh, Whitewater about shortening up the game a little bit. Is that going to be part of the mentality to try to maybe run a little bit more than you normally would to try to shorten the game a little bit and limit their possessions? Well, certainly, but it's not like you can just flip a switch and run the ball on these guys. Sure, they're, yeah, they're still yeah. really, really good on defense as well. I mean, um, and Whitewater was good enough physically to, to run the ball fairly effectively and control the game. So we certainly will, will, will do what we can to, to string together a lot of first downs and, and run the ball, ball as efficiently as possible. Yeah. Um, is there anything that the Whitewater Wisconsin did specifically that you can kind of adapt that fits your style of play? Uh, no, I think they're a little bit different style. I mean, they're built for they're built physically for that type of a game. They, 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 that's what Whitewater does. I mean, their, their offensive line is, is massive, and their tight ends and H-backs uh, are all very physical, strong, uh, a lot of fifth-year seniors in that group. So they're, they're physically elite themselves on, on, on offense, and they were able to, to run the ball enough to, to shorten the game and minimize the number of possessions and, and have that one you know, really great drive at the end to, to pull the game out. And uh, you, you talked about giving the guys a bit of a blueprint of the kind of stuff you want them to do. It's still up to them to execute. How do you convince them that they can give these guys a good football game? Well, I don't think we have to. I mean, I think if anything, it, it's um, it's getting them to calm down a little bit. I mean, you don't have to get you don't have to get guys excited to go play the defending national champion. As right, Peyton right. talked about, being calm is the way to go about it. Oh. And I, we talked about this at our team meeting today also. Sometimes teams get so overhyped and so excited to play these guys that they go, you know, they make mistakes on their own. They don't right, make right. them have to work very hard. <laughs> they, you know, they jump off sides. They, they drop the ball. They lose their eye focus, as Peyton talked about, you know, eye focus. So not getting them excited to play the game. It's getting them to relax. It's, mm -hmm. it's a football game. We're not playing the New England Patriots. We're playing another Division Three football team, a really, really good one. Right. Um, national championship caliber again, but it's just another football team. Just do what you need to do. Focus on things you can focus on. And that will give us the best opportunity to, to, to give them a good game. And I would imagine, too, if you can get off to a better start than he got off with last week, just to kind of boost that confidence and maybe tighten the screws on them a little bit, get them thinking. Because they're coming off a loss themselves, so they might be starting to think, well, we're not invulnerable after all. Well, certainly. If, if you spot these guys 28, you're not going to come back on right. it. It's, we're not going to – I don't know that anybody could score 28 unanswered against them. <laughs> but they're, they're pretty darn good. So we will need to, yeah, we'll need to hang with them from, from the beginning and, and not, uh, not put ourselves in the hole. Yeah, last question for you. We talked about Landry Gilpin being a little bit banged up. Some of the other guys, overall, how is the team uh, health-wise heading into week number three of the season? Um, uh, we're, you know, we're doing okay. We, 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 we still haven't had uh, Peyton Ludeman, who's the starting safety for us, hasn't played all year. Dugan Sexton, a starting wide receiver, still hasn't played yet. Um, we're without Camden Terry. Probably this week again, who is a starting corner for us. Sets three three defensive starters were without. Um, the three, yeah, the third being Patrick Nicholas. We talked about him. He, he's out this week. He has to serve a suspension from being ejected from last game. So we're without three defensive starters, and then offensively we're, we're without Dugan. Um, you know, we'll see we'll see Landry's status later in the week, uh, and then uh, Demetrius Elko, our center, had a, a an injury that we're still evaluating X-rays, MRIs, all that to know what his status for this game and then further down down the road will be. So I don't know his status for this, for this week either. He's, he's still on the depth chart. You know, we don't know if he's in or out, but that's another guy that we're, we're hoping can get healed up and, and get back in. Well, everybody across the country last week was saying, you know, Alabama was going to be the measuring stick for, te for Texas. Texas is back. they got to play well against Alabama. They did so. There's no bigger challenge than facing the number one team in the country. So hopefully this will be a good measuring stick for you guys. Any final thoughts here before we sign off for the night? No, I think we're... We're happy to close the book on last week, and we'll open the book again on, on this week, and hopefully we'll go. Uh, we'll give these guys a good game. It's a, it's a good challenge for us. They're always a, a really outstanding football team, and, and hopefully our guys will come with the right mindset, and uh, we'll, we'll make them work. We'll find out on a Saturday night. Pirates versus Mary Harden Baylor, Saturday night, 6 o'clock from Crusader Stadium in Belton. Uh, be sure to it's not that far away. You don't have to take a bus. Get up there and see the stadium for yourself and support the Pirates on a short road trip. Uh, we'll be out there if you can't make it roughly 545 here on Vibe.com. So thank you to our producer and technical director, Suna Vincott, uh, Chuck Crazy, Shane Carter coming out and helping, my better half, uh, Christina Weber. Thanks to everybody here who tuned in, both the in person and on the interweb, and Coach Joe Austin. Bessie with Jack's Lounge here at the Georgetown Sheraton. My name is Merle Birch and signing out for the night. And we'll see you Saturday night from the stadium for Pirates football right here on Vibe Live. Good night, everybody.